Those of you who are religious, who go to church, there are stories in the Bible that can be used easily to pretty well tell the condition of the black man in America once he became a Negro, where they refer to him there as the lost sheep, meaning someone who's lost from his own kind. That's in, which is how you and I have been for the past 400 years. We've been in a land where we are not citizens, or in a land where they treated us as strangers. Or they have another uh, symbolic story in there called the, uh, the dry bones. And many of you have gone to church Sunday after Sunday and got, you know, the ghosts, they call it. What happened? And started talking about it. When the old preacher started singing about dry bones, you knock over benches. Just because he was singing about the bones, those dry bones, I don't know how to say. But you never could identify the symbolic meaning of those bones. How they were dead because they had been cut off from their own time. And our people here in America have been in the same condition as those dry bones that you sit in the church singing about. But you shed more tears over those dry bones than you shed over yourself. This is going to show what happens to a people when they are cut off and stripped of everything like you and, you and I have been cut off and stripped of everything. We become a people like no other people. And we are a people like no other people. No other people on earth like you and me. We're, we're unique. We're different. They, they say that we're Negroes and they say that Negro means black, but yet they don't call all black people Negroes. You see the, the contradiction? Mind you. They say it for Negro because Negro means black and Spanish. Yet they don't call all black people Negroes. Something there doesn't add up. And then to get around it, they say uh, uh, mankind is uh, divided up into three categories, mongoloid, caucasoid, and, uh, and Negro. Now pick up on that. And all black people aren't Negro. They got some jet black ones that they classify as caucasoid. But if you study very closely, all of the black ones that they classify as Caucasoid are those that uh, still have great civilization, or still have the remains of what was once a great civilization. And the only ones that they classify as Negroid are those that they find with no evidence that they were ever civilized, and they call them Negroid. But they can't afford to let any black-skinned people who have evidence that they formerly occupied a high seat in civilization, they can't afford to let them be called anymore, so they take them on into the Caucasoid classification. And actually, Caucasoid, Mongoloid, and Negroid, there's no such thing. These are so called anthropological terms that were put together by anthropologists who were nothing but agents of the colonial powers, and they were purposely given that status. They were purposely given such scientific uh, positions in order that they could come up with definitions that would justify the European domination over the African and the Asian. So immediately they invented classifications that would automatically demote these people or put them on a lesser level. All of the prophets are at a high level. The Negroes are kept at a low level. This is just plain trickery that their scientists engage in in order to keep you and me thinking that we are, we never were nothing, and therefore, well, he's doing us a favor as he lets us step upward or forward in his particular society or civilization. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now then, once you see that, that the condition that we're in is directly related to our lack of knowledge concerning the history of the black man, only then do you realize the importance of knowing something about the history of the black man. And the black man's history, when you refer to him as a black man, you go way back. But when you refer to him as a Negro, you can only go as far back as the Negro goes. And when you go beyond the shores of America, you can't find the Negro. So if you go beyond the shores of America in history, looking for the history of the black man, if you're looking for him under the term Negro, you won't find him. He doesn't exist. So you end up thinking that you didn't play any role in history. But if you want to take the time to do research for yourself, I think you'll find that on the African continent, there, there, all, there was always, prior to the discovery of America, there was always a higher level of history, or a high, rather a higher level of culture and civilization than that which existed in Europe at the same time. 
At least 5,000 years ago, they had a black civilization in uh, the Middle East. What did you have? In the Middle East, uh, called the Sumerians. Now when they show you pictures of the Sumerians, they're trying to make you think that they were white people. But if you go and read some of the ancient manuscripts, or even read between the lines on some of the current uh, writers, you'll find that the Sumerian civilization was a very dark-skinned civilization, and it existed prior even to the existence of the Babylonian Empire, right in the same area where you find Iraq and the Tigris, the Euphrates, uh, rivers there. It was a, a black-skinned people who lived there, who had a high state of culture way back then. And at a time even beyond there, there was a black-skinned people in India who were black, just as black as you and I, called Dravidians. They uh, inhabited the uh, subcontinent of India even before the present people that you see living there today. And they had a high state of culture. And the present people of India even looked upon them as gods. Most of their statues, if you know, are, 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 have pronounced African features. You go right to India today, in their religion, which is called Buddhism, and they give all their Buddhas the image of a black man with his lips and his nose and his even show his hair all curled up on his head. His hair didn't, they didn't curl it up. It was born. He was born in that way. And these people lived in that area before the present people of India lived there. They lived, the black man lived in the Middle East before the present people who are now living there lived there. And he had a high culture and a high civilization. To say nothing about the oldest civilization of all that he had in Egypt among the banks of the Nile. And when, and in, uh, Congress, in, uh, in North West Africa, another part of the country, and at a later date in uh, Mali and, and uh, uh, Ghana and Songa and some of the, and, and the Moorish civilization, all of these civilizations existed on the African continent before America was discovered. Now, 